So this is him, Diego Barrientos. He's, oh, he's so good. He is so, so good. And, right, the, agree with, the deal that we've agreed, £6 million. Obviously, the problem is uh, he's not going to get a work permit. I don't, or he might get a work permit because we've had to offer him a massive wage because that's what he wanted. Um, so he might get a work permit. Obviously, the work permit rules, it's like it depends on how much you spend on the plane and how much wages you offer them as to whether or not um, they'll get a work permit. But the, way, the transfer fee is nowhere near what you need to get points for the work permit system and whatever. But if I can get him, if he signs, I'll almost be annoyed that I signed Liora for uh, 25 million. But it'll be two very, very good options. And that should be right back sorted for the foreseeable future, really. Right, unsurprisingly, because he's not played enough reason in international games for his country, uh, the work permit application has been rejected. We will appeal it, and uh, when will we get it? It'll be made on Saturday, the 12th of August. Bloody hell, I've got so long to wait. But oh, this, oh, this is on the same day that we play Fulham. Bloody hell, well, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh... It's been rejected. It's been rejected. I'm so upset. Oh, I can't believe it. And now, oh my God. <sighs> what should I do? What should I do? If we can't get a work permit for you in the near future, we'll send you on loan until we can. I'm not, oh no. Oh, how heartbreaking is that? He's so good. He's so, so good. Uh, I'll just have to try again in January, I guess. Oh, that is, I'm going to have to keep my eye on him. How's it going guys? My name is Jake Fogg and welcome back to episode number 57 of my Football Manager 2020 journey here today with Leeds United and well, as you saw by the little intro that I put together for you today, we have got our man Diego Barrientos, the 22 year old Argentinian right wing back has finally signed for the tiny fee of £5.75 million, I mean how on earth this guy wasn't picked up by someone else uh, before me. I guess, like, I mean, you look at that, he had one under 20 cap. Uh, he, obviously, he didn't really get that much international recognition uh, from Argentina. But I've been keeping my eyes on him because I desperately, desperately wanted him. And as soon as I knew that he'd be able to get that work permit, I wanted to go straight back into him. Fortunately... He did uh, He did break into the Argentina squads. I think it was here. He made his debut here against Uruguay. And then I saw that they had the uh, the Copper America. And he pretty much played every single game in the group. And because Argentina are so highly, uh, they're so high in the world rankings, he needed to play like in 30% of recent fixtures. The Copper America took him to that 30%. And well, we managed to get him. And finally, oh, I'm just so, so pleased. He's so, so, so good. Oh... I love him. I just love him so, so much. But obviously, he is not the only signing that we have made. And obviously, I'm going to talk you through the signings. But I've got some sales to talk you through first. But as always, before I do get into the brunt of today's video, if you do enjoy, please do be sure to drop a like on the video. I really do appreciate it. It really, really does help me out. And also, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you are new around here. I just want to say thank you for all the support recently. Uh, like I said, I recently hit about a week or two ago. I hit 500 subscribers. I actually set myself a goal at the beginning of August of hitting 500 subscribers by the end of August and obviously today is the 1st of September and as I'm recording this I'm currently on 519 subscribers so you've absolutely smashed it out of the park just want to say thank you um yeah really really do appreciate it. it really does motivate me to keep going and I'm really really enjoying this series and hopefully it's still got plenty more episodes left in the tank but anyway the intro is long enough today um let's just talk you through the uh through the summer transfers and um well we've broken our transfer record by a long way so first uh, player on the outs, well, kind of on the outs, I've sent him out on loan, is Leandro Garcia. You may remember, I signed him a couple seasons ago, and to be honest, he's just not been very good for me. I mean, 24 games, 4 goals, 25 games, 4 goals. I mean, I did deploy him as a winger half the time, but he's just not done what I expected him to do. He's just not performed how I hoped that he would, given his attributes. I thought he was going to be an absolute superstar. Um, but unfortunately, he's just not really done it for me. I did actually try and sell him for quite a high amount. Um, 
because he's got a very high value. You know, he's got a lot of resale value, but no one really wanted to sign him. So I sent him out on loan to Alaves for the season. He's going to be their starting striker, I'm assuming. At least he's going to be playing regularly in La Liga. Hopefully, if he has a good season over there, maybe he'll improve a bit, get some interest in him, and then we can potentially sell him next season. Or um, or we can get him back into the squad, but that will, I guess, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that one. But yeah, the first player out, Leandro Garcia, out on loan for the season. And then the next player out, this one was actually a sale. Stefan Posh, a 27-year-old Austrian centre-back. He's, I mean, he's not really played much for me at all recently. I signed him for 7.25 million from a relegated Hoffenheim. He came in, did half a job really, and we've somehow managed to ship him off for 19.5 million to Birmingham in the Championship. So, yeah, more than happy. With that, to be honest, he, like I say, he hardly played for me last... He played six games all in all last season, ten games all in all the season before. And, I mean, his first season he did appear 27 times, so he was a pretty important player in that first season for us. But, yeah, didn't really have much use for him. And to get nearly 20 million... Well, it's going to rise to over 20 million when he's, you know, with add-ons and whatnot. So, yeah, pretty happy to get that for him. And now, the final sale, an interesting one. Um, not one that I really planned to make, but... I kind of ended up doing so anyway. Aaron Hickey, uh, obviously he's been a great like utility player for me. He can play left back and right back naturally. Um, he's been great cover on either side, but I just kind of felt like maybe I could do, I could get better. And you know, I just kind of I offered him out to clubs, see who would buy it, and Burnley bit. And well, twenty five and a half million, considering we signed him for four, well, just shy of five million three or four seasons ago. To get 25 and a half, potentially rising to 28 and a half, is a fantastic deal. I think that I think it's um, rising to 28 and a half based off of how many games he played. I mean, he started every game for Burnley so far in the league, so hopefully that'll continue and we will get the full amount of money for him. But yeah, it's a shame to see him go. You know, like he was quite an important player for me, even though he was never like a consistent player. He played a lot of games, he played a lot of cup matches. So yeah, it's a shame to see him go, but when you get that kind of money offered, I mean, you can't turn it down really. And well, I thought I could do better and I have, I have signed a replacement, but obviously we'll talk about that in just a moment. So this one isn't a transfer as such. Obviously, you all should know Enrique Hermoso. He signed him in the January transfer window. He didn't get a work permit, so we sent him out on loan to Bayern Munich. But fortunately, he played a couple more times for Argentina, and that just tipped him over the 30% of games played. We applied for his work permit. He's got his work permit. He's going to be my starting striker. I am very, very excited to see how he does this season. As you can see, he's already scored a goal for me. So, I mean, he started off the season well. So hopefully, yeah, Enrique Hermoso, he's going to have the season of his life. Hopefully, anyway. And then the man that has been brought in to sort of replace Hickey, be my backup left wing back, Jonathan Panzo, um, signed in from AS Monaco for 20 and a half million. I mean, it is a fair bit, but we have got the advantage of the fact that he is English and he is homegrown. I feel like he is just a little bit better than Hickey anyway. Uh, he's also a little bit more natural at that left wing back position. And also the fact that he can play centre back is fantastic. Yeah, very quick, pretty well rounded technically. Fairly solid mentally, still got a bit of room to go, a bit of room to grow at just 23 years old. Yeah, so this guy, I'm planning on. I wanted a left back that could potentially compete with Davis for the starting spot because Davis, he always, if he plays too many games, he's always jaded and in need of a rest or he picks up little knocks and is out for one, two weeks very, very often. And I need someone that I'm confident that can come in, step in just for those games or maybe in the cup matches, in the European matches when needed, step in and kind of actually do a decent job for me. And I think Panzo is, uh, I think he's going to be a decent player for me. He ultimately is just a backup option. I know I'm spending a lot of money on his wages, but I scoured long and hard for a left back and I just could not find one anywhere. And this guy popped up and he seemed to be a pretty sensible choice and yeah, very, very happy with him ultimately. And finally, the man that we've broken our transfer record on. And when I say broken it, we have absolutely smashed through it. Tiago Fernandez. One thing I really needed, I wanted a new advanced playmaker, uh, at least a player that was either already very good or was very good already and still had room to grow. And this guy fit the mould perfectly. 20 years old, 
described as a wonder kid. I think he's got some fantastic uh, attributes already. His mentals are, I mean, they're pretty phenomenal as it is. Three star current ability, which pretty much places him as one of my, it pretty much places him straight in as the best advanced playmaker. And obviously being 20 years old, five star potential. He's left footed. He's going to play on that left hand side of midfield. Um, and hopefully the switch over to the Premier League will kind of will help him out. And you, you know when players they get that initial bit of growth where it's like, oh, has gained match experience at a higher level than before. I'm hoping that that's what's going to happen with this guy. And hopefully we'll see some good growth coming out of him. Now, the question is, how much did we spend on him? Um, yeah, £53 million. Pounds. But my thinking with this was, I've sold Hickey for nearly 30 million, I've sold Posh for around 20 million, and I've been given a transfer budget of 75 million. There's no point in me having all this money if I'm not going to spend it. And this guy, he just seemed, you know, he seemed to be the perfect option. Genuinely, I've been looking so, so hard for players that want to come, uh, are going to be a reasonable price, potentially could get better, or are already very, very good. And this guy genuinely seemed to be one of the best options. He had a £53 million release fee or a release clause in his contract. Sporting did not want to let him go. They wouldn't accept any, they wouldn't even negotiate with me until I just outright offered his release clause, <clears throat> which, um, yeah, it was a little bit frustrating, but I really do think that this guy is going to go on and be an absolute superstar, potentially one of the best midfielders in the world. And if he can grow at the same way that Ole Soderberg has been growing, then I'll be very, very happy. But so far, that is pretty much the only bit of business that I've actually, I've, that's a lie. Uh, we've got this guy still coming in. You may remember I signed him a while ago, Darko uh, Agic. Agic? Agic? Uh, he was Bosnian, but he's declared for France. As you can see, very, very good, just 17 years old, nearly 18 years old. He actually joins on the 1st of September when he does turn 18. <clears throat> the only problem is he is right-footed, right-only, so it's either do I want to train him to play right-wing or do I want to try and work on his weak foot? I'm not really sure. Probably will train him to be a right-winger, and then if I need him, he can play out on the left as well. But yeah, I think this guy is going to be very, very good. Definitely going to uh, compete or at least put a little bit of pressure in on the starting wingers and uh, get some minutes in the cup matches and potentially in Europe as well. So he is someone that I'm very, very excited for. Uh, we've agreed to sign this guy, Wencho Nelis. Uh, he joins in January, signing for 675k. Um, Five-star potential. You know, he has got, he's got a lot of room to grow. Uh, it's just a case of whether or not we can kind of tutor that personality out of him change it to you know a more ideal personality than unambitious i don't i don't know if i want him to be a striker he's not got the best attributes to be a striker potentially more of a, a central midfielder but that will um <clears throat> that will we'll just have to wait and see what happens with him and then last but not least this guy looks very very good <clears throat> Allah talat 17 year old egyptian already in the e uh, egyptian national side he doesn't join till next summer. Uh, he won't get a work permit either unless he plays like every single game for Egypt from here on out, which to be fair, he's their best left back already and at 17 years old. I don't think we'll have to wait too long for this guy to get a work permit. But yeah, hopefully he does get that work permit and he can join straight away, but I don't think he will. And I think that is pretty much it. So today we have got one game against Norwich and uh, we've played a couple games already. As you can see, we are currently sat in 11th place. So let's... Let's quickly talk. I'll quickly run you through the games as well that's happened. So we kicked off the season with a matchup at home against bitter rivals Manchester United, and well, Hermoso, I was excited for him, and he scored 53 seconds into his debut. Hopefully, that is a sign of things to come. And then Matty Bogus or Mateusz Bogus added the second goal just five minutes into the game. De Gea could not keep it out, and then uh, we rounded off the scoring. In the 85th minute, Barrientos getting down that right-hand side, playing a cross into Maria at the far post, who headed home. Barrientos getting a goal, uh, an assist, sorry, on his debut from right wing back. And, I mean, what a performance to start the season that was. And after taking on Manchester United at home to start off the season, we followed it up with a game against Manchester City away. And uh, Manchester City did take the lead just after half-time. Rodrigo, we were going pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in the first half. But unfortunately, the second half just did not quite go as planned. A great ball from Kevin De Bruyne. And Bowden finished it into the back of the net. And I just want to talk about this Bowden guy. Look how good he is as a right winger. 
And the most frustrating part about it is, I I wanted to sign him, but Nantes were wanting. I mean, you'll see, he is only 19 years old, but when he was 17 years old, Nantes wanted 45 million pounds for him, and I just wasn't prepared to pay 45 million pounds for a 17 year old. And well, it's safe to say I definitely regret not spending that money, but. It is what it is, and unfortunately we uh, did lose that game 2-0 away to Manchester City. It was always going to be a tough game, but yeah, they were just they were just the better side on the day, unfortunately. So you can see after two games, we are currently sat down in 11th place, but only two games gone. It doesn't really mean a right lot. We're playing away at Norwich today, starting off with a win against Southampton, then a draw against Newcastle. So it'll be interesting to see how we get on today. I'm actually going to give Fernandez his first start of the season. And I'm also going to, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to give Ponzo a start, or Panzo a start at left wing back. He's not, um, he's not even made the bench in his uh, first couple uh, of outings. So today he will. Hermoso was out injured for the last game, uh, so he's going to be on the. Uh, he's going to be back in the starting eleven, and also Franceschi has been on international duty, so we'll get him in for Bastoni, I reckon, and we'll get Bastoni on the bench ahead of Sistana. But apart from that, I think I'm very, very happy with the team. So it's Pavlenka in goal, Franceschi and Kenny at the back with Phillips just in front of them. Panzo left wing back, Barrientos right wing back, Fernandez and Soderberg in the middle, Maria on the left, Vignato on the right, and Hermoso at the top as that lone striker. So we're going to have to give Jonathan Panzo his squad number. You can be number 17, I think, charging up from left wing back. And uh, let's just get straight into it. Let's see how we can do away at Norwich. I'm I'm pretty happy with um, the squad I've got at the moment. I still need a backup goalkeeper, but I just can't find one anywhere. It's so, so frustrating. But in terms of my starting eleven, I genuinely do believe I have a starting eleven now that is potentially good enough to put up a proper challenge for the league title. I mean, we only finished nine points off the title last season, and that was without uh, Hermoso, that was without Fernandez, that was without uh, Barrientos. And we've not weak, and we've only added uh, better players to that uh, our strongest starting eleven. So if we can stay relatively injury free, I'd be very, very happy. But we also do now have decent backups um, in some of our previous positions of weakness. As Norwich are bringing it down the left hand side, crosses in, and Timari Gray is at the far post, and he heads home. Oh God! Oh, I tell you what. After we beat Man United four nil. In that opening game of the season, my my spirits were very very high, only for them to come crashing back down to earth against Manchester City, and then well, they've already crashed back down to earth. I don't know where they can go now. They just go even further through the floor now that we're losing one nil <laughs> to Norwich in uh, just our third game of the league season. But Soderberg plays it forward to Hermoso, but Kone nips in front. And uh, Norwich regain possession. Martinez goes long. Is Phillips going to win it? No. Nope. Okay, well, Kenny ends up with the ball. Out to Panzo. Inside to Soderberg. Goes back to Phillips to Fernandez. Let's see. What what can you do, Fernandez? That's a very nice ball to Panzo out on the left-hand side. That's an interesting ball back to Vignato. But at least we keep possession. Now, Barrientos down at right-hand side to his Argentinian international teammate, Hermoso. And Hermoso appears to have been fouled. And who's going to step up and take the penalty? It's going to be uh, Emmanuel, what's his name? Vignato. I can't remember his, his first name. Emmanuel Vignato. As he slots it home, Emmanuel Vignato. I knew I got it right first time. But he gets us back onto level terms with the penalty. I think he struck that very, very high up into the roof of the net. Yeah, you can see there. Keeper nearly got a hand to it. But I think uh, he just, just got it a little bit too high for the keeper to reach as we go into half time level. I'm just going to tell them I'm not particularly happy with uh, what we've been doing so far. It's not the kind of performance that I uh, that I expect from these players as uh, Norwich now have a corner to the far post. Kenny gets up and heads it clear. Now great pressured by two but gets it off to Diara. Now Morrow to Robertone and that is a good interception by Franceschi. Back to Pavlenka and now Kenny looks to play a ball forward but that's a poor ball and Hermoso is beaten but Ponzo, pick, Ponzo picks it up. I keep calling him Ponzo and now Maria down this left hand side goes inside to Fernandez, a £53 million pound man to Soderberg. Great ball to through to Vignato. Oh, so so close. A big save from Emi Martinez in the uh, in the Norwich City goal. Denies Vignato the, uh, the go-ahead goal 
the go ahead goal that's a very american term isn't it like the go ahead basket or the the go ahead um the go ahead touchdown i don't know bloody hell i'm getting all my getting my terminology all mixed up cross sports cross nations as uh well, we're not having we're not what are we what are we playing at i'm actually going to get davis on the left wing that's the advantage of having Panzo as well. Is Davis, if needed, I can slot him in at left wing because he can play there and he can play there fairly, fairly well. And oh, we're just not having a good time. Let's bring Bogus on. Let's take off Fignato as well. Mikic, come on, do something. Please don't finish this as a one or draw away at Norwich as we're into injury time. There's just been no highlights. And, well, there we go. Time has ticked away and uh, the game is over. Right, brilliant. Tell them that their efforts were excellent? No. No, I'm not telling them that the efforts were excellent. Oh, shit. We just drew away at Norwich. We drew away at Norwich. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Well, that is actually going to be the only game that I'm going to play today, because obviously we had all the transfers and everything to talk through. So, for the next episodes, um, I'm not sure when I'll be back. I might even be back as soon as our first Champions League group match. I guess it just depends who we do draw, which I'll find out in between episodes and I'll kind of make a judgment call on it and then uh, come back at a decent point. But anyway, that is where I'm going to finish off today's episode. As always, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And I'll catch you in the next episode.